Okay, today we're going to add on to what we learned last week. Uh, we are going to, um, well, let's go into the interpreter here. Again, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. Hopefully you've watched the previous tutorials. Uh, today, uh, again, we're going to be working with uh, lists, but we're also going to incorporate uh, for loops and range, which are stuff we've learned over the last three or four weeks. A uh, new Python video every Wednesday, by the way. Um, so real quick, I can create an array or a list and I can say Chris comma Jen and put quotations around it because I want it to be a string and I can say Jim x equals that and uh, of course I can say len to get the length of that which is three objects. Now the great thing about lists, arrays, that sort of stuff is that it can shorten up your code. I mean, there, there's a lot of good things about it, but definitely it can take code that's long and shorten up, and especially if you're writing a program, you know, a larger program, it, it can it can change the size of your code dramatically and what you have to type out and make it easier to change stuff. So real quick, I'm going to create a script. Uh, I'm going to call it um, um, mylist.py. And of course, we're going to start off with our shebang line, as we always do. I've gone over why that's important in previous tutorials. I'm going to say Python 3, because we're using Python 3. And now let's say that I had a group of people, and they're all in a group, Python group, whatever. We want to print, have a script that prints out who's in that list, uh, who's in that group. I can say print, and then I can say Chris is in the group. And then what I can do is I can copy that paste it a few times and I can say Jen is in the group, Jim is in the group, Tim is in the group, Tom is in the group, Kelly is in the group, and Bob is in the group. And the group might be a lot bigger than that, you know? Might have 20 people in it. So right now I can save that, make it executable, giving it permission to run on my system, and then I'll say dot slash the name of the file. And you can see that it has printed out that information. Chris is in the group, Jen is in the group, blah, blah, blah. Going back into it, um, let's use a list to do this. Now, once again, one of the benefits of using a list, and there are many, I'll call the variable that we're going to put the list in names. One of the benefits is that the list is right here in one part of your script, possibly at the top, depending on how you have things organized. If you need to change something in the list, remove them, add somebody, whatever, make changes. You just have to do it here. You don't have to do it in multiple places. Let's say you had those print functions going, but you also had other functions going that are using those names. This is just like creating a variable. You change it in one place and it changes it everywhere. So we can say uh, Chris, Jen, Jim, Tim, Tom. Yeah. Kelly and Bob are all in the group in the list we're calling names. Now we can use the for loop. We're creating a variable called i. And we're saying in the range, and we're going to give it a function, and inside that function, another function of length, and our list names. Now, we could just put, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We could just put the number 7 in here. We could just do that. And this would work. But then if we change the length of the list, well, that would cause a problem. If we made it longer, it wouldn't get the names at the end of the list. If we made it shorter, we'd get a, out of, uh, an index out of range error. So using this function to check the length, the number of objects in the list, means that we can change the list, and this function, this loop, uh, this for loop, will not uh, break. So that is why we went over these in previous tutorials. Uh, but basically, it's going to start at 0 and count to 7. And we're going to say, 
print names and then in the square brackets the letter I uh, which again will start at zero and count through uh, seven so it's not going to display the number if we just put the I over here like this was just an I it would say uh, zero is in the group one is in the group but that's not what we want we want zero from the list of names so let's save this oops I am escape. There we go. Now, again, we'll make our. Oh, we've already made it executable, so we don't need to make it executable again. I forgot that we already ran this script once. Dot slash the name of our script. And when I hit enter to run it, you can see the output is the same to the end user in this particular case. But again, going back to our code. It's only three lines of code now, where before it was, well, seven lines of code because we had seven names. And we can continue to add to this. So especially if this list was really long, uh, let's say there's there's 100 people unless sure, this line right here is going to get super long. But it's still shorter than, than having this part every time, you know, over and over and over and over again in the code. Again, if you wanted to make changes, it's easier to change it up on the list than go and find it in the code and change each place that you use that name. So, this is in a script using list uh, and a for loop with the range function and the length function. Oh, and I guess and the print function. So, incorporating a bunch of stuff that we have already uh, worked on. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. I hope you're seeing the value of lists, and um, I hope that you come back next Wednesday for another tutorial. Uh, again, every Wednesday as I'm putting these out, uh, Python 3 tutorials, uh, if you're watching this in the future, there should be an annotation on the screen to the full play. Well, there, there will be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist, but of course it might end here if you're watching this as I put it out. Uh, but if you're watching in the future, the full playlist will be there. Um, Check that out. Visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Be sure to like and subscribe to this video. And I hope that you have a great day.